Hello, and welcome to Dolphin's Dive, the weekly strategically minded Handelabra stream hosted by Logic Dolphin. Handelabra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against those goals are not welcome and will not be tolerated. You can follow us at Handelabra Games on Twitch and Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You can follow me personally at Logic Dolphin on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Discord, pretty much any avenue. Sentinels of the Multiverse, Bottom of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, Aeon's End, and Spirit Island are all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices. And Spirit Island is not on Switch, but One Deck Dungeon is. One Deck Dungeon is on Switch. And you can find more information on those games at Handelabra.com. If it's hosted by Logic Dolphin, am I Logic Dolphin? I am the one who knocks! Alright. So John said that he might have had spirit island ready for me to demo on my stream on his stream and then he said that that's not happening so bummer villainy 501 what is who is me this place ahem excuse me as you can see we begin your postgraduate villainy studies in the same place as you started years ago same a new remade me improved this is a chance for you to rebuild yourself in a true image of perfect evil something the heroes can never take away from you Never was, always will be, cannot, must. The poor dears, they never learn, do they? Same old tricks, same old fools. Together, apart, part, whole. My allies and I have been researching a new approach, and today we will test it out in the field. This one shot requires Infernal Relics, Mini Pack 2, Vengeance, and Villains of the Multiverse. Cool. Misinformation, Airman and Ambuscade versus Rogue Agent Knife and Scholar of the Infinite and... Prime Wardens Argent Adept in the uh, mobile defense platform, that environment. You're here on time today because the snowstorm caused your squash to be squashed. <laughs> but um, psh. what is what was is no more. Now you face a world rewritten. Otter wished here long time deed. Alright, so Knife has a kinetic neutralizer and overdo it and two wrecking uppercuts. Scholar of the Infinite has alchemical redirection, get out of the way, keep moving in mortal forms energy. Extreme Prime Wards are to death. I'm sorry, I don't know what these cards are. Our Drake's Pipes, Instrumental Conjuration, Inventive Preparation, and Avernal Sonata. What is knife actually saying there? No one ever knows. <laughs> All right, so no uh, advanced or challenge rules here. This information starts with two ongoing cards put into play. At the end of this information's turn, the top card of each hero deck is moved to the bottom of that deck. Hmm. 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 Airman says, uh, Constant Prattle is put into play at the end of Airman's turn. The top card of Airman's villain deck is revealed. If it is not a one shot, it is put into play. If not, it is discarded, and Airman deals here. Target with the second lowest HP, two melee damage, and Constant Prattle. At the end of Airman's turn, discard the top card of each deck. This doesn't count for it, does it? You have discarded. Cards you have discarded, not cards Airman has discarded. And lastly, we have Ambuscade. Cards revealed from the top of Ambuscade's deck until a nemesis is revealed and put into play. At the end of Ambuscade's turn, Ambuscade deals each target next to a snare three melee damage. If no damage is dealt this way, the top card of Ambuscade's deck is played. Hmm. Villain targets are immune to damage. Heroes cannot use powers. Constant Prattle. Magman. But the reality is gone, okay. <laughs> that was a very helpful twisted reality, wasn't it? Uh <laughs> Okay, well. We still have Unshackled Destiny. If damage would reduce the target to zero or fewer HP, prevent that damage, then destroy this card. All right, pay attention, because this will be on the test. 
Overcharged, Null Shield, Mortal Form the Energy, Instrumental Conjuration. So, test. What was the, what was the bottom of, of Scholar's deck? <laughs> uh, overcharged, Null Shield was this one. Reduce damage dealt to knife by the villain target with the highest HP by one. Also, do we have any nemeses in this game? We have the nemesis icons, but not nemeses of the main villains, or main heroes, so. But Misinformation and Airmen are nemeses of each other, which is cool. Seems too early for mortal form energy for Scholar, because he didn't lose any hit points, although he does have a get out of the way. But putting it into play now means he has to pay to use it, which is annoying. Also, before we forget, the Scholar has discarded zero cards since there has not been a previous turn for the Scholar. I like the phrasing there. It's almost like the Scholar has discarded zero cards since, and then this would normally say the last turn, but now it says there has not been a previous turn for the Scholar. It's funny. Um, and then yours was, yours was an instrumental conjuration. Grammar police here, yes, yes. I will fully admit to being a grammar police. Uh, if I do Zeus Bell, then I can actually use both parts of this. The perform kind of sucks. It doesn't do much because Airman's gonna move cards around with constant prattle. Actually, even before that, I guess it's not 100% useless. It gives us slight control over what moves to the bottom of our decks. But only for knife and scholar. But the extra card plays I like. Plus, Zeus Spell is the only way you can activate the performable rhythm with this version of Argent Adept. Do you want to deal two damage to have a card play and a power, or do I want to play a card? I guess if I could somehow combo this effect. Actually, no, I guess since it's the only top card, I can't actually control it with this. But I could do some something someday, like use uh, Arcane Cadence and then Punch Knife to put the bottom card of my deck into play. It's a nice combo. Villain targets are immune to damage at the end of a hero's turn. If no cards are played and no powers are used, that turn destroy this card. I feel like Scholar is a decent target for this. He doesn't have much going on for him right now. Draw two extra cards and start working on getting set up next turn. We want Arjun Adept to get set up. Uh, do we care about these things? Genetic Neutralizer for extra damage that we don't have. Extra card plays at the expense of self damage damage that we can't deal and discard the top card of a villain deck, which does not much. Also, what does Magman do? End of Ambus Case, turn this card deals the hero target with the second lowest HP, three, three fire damage, and Unity is not active in this game. I was having an idea about having a hero deck that does stuff, but it's augmented by which environment you're in. Like, cards that will say, for instance, knife deals one target, two melee damage. If the environment is Wagner Mars base, she deals a second target, two energy damage. Or, Ar Argent Adept draws a card and uses a power. If the environment is Silver Gulch, he may activate the text of this card again. <laughs> Three damage? No, it's two damage. Two damage for extra play. I mean, I definitely want to put Instrumental Conjuration in the play. How likely is it that Airman's gonna destroy stuff? Airman destroys stuff a lot of time, right? I 
At the end of Ermin's turn, move one hero ongoing card from play to the top of the associated hero's deck, and then it moves to the bottom! Or not even to the bottom, to the trash. At the end of Ermin's villain turn, destroy a card. If at least one card is destroyed this way, destroy this card. That's it? That's the main ways that she destroys stuff? Oh. How about one shot, which... I guess it doesn't have destruction icon on it because it's not being destroyed. So there's four heavy hitters, a Calypso, and two impromptu heists. So seven out of 19 cards that are gonna do something. But of these cards, this one doesn't affect Instrumental Conjuration. This one would affect, well, Zeus Bell, rather. It would affect Zeus Bell if we don't have an ongoing in play already, and this would destroy it regardless. So it's really a two out of 19 that Zeus Bell gets destroyed, and a four out of, an additional four out of 19 if we don't play Kinetic Neutralizer or overdo it. Maybe if they overdo it. And I use it next turn to play Kinetic Neutralizer and something else, probably. Sure. If I lose that card, that's okay. Oh my gosh, it's Instrumental, instrumental Conjuration! Or, and bear with me on this, each player discards a card, which helps Scholar because he has discarded zero cards since there has not been a previous turn for the Scholar. I don't care for this. Yeah, out of the way can be pretty good. Mortal form to energy in hand is not as helpful as I keep moving into mortal form because then I can play something else afterwards. I think I discard mortal form. Good evening, remote error. And welcome to Dolphin's Dive. Drake's Pipes is the least useful right now. We can always conjure it if we need it. Let's stick dissonant. Can't really work right now until we get another instrument, but this one draws cards. Actually, it is the one that this card two first and then draw three, which is actually in some situations worse, in other situations better. Like if you have zero cards or one card in hand, then you profit more cards than normal. If you have two or more cards, then it's actually slightly worse because you can't like keep the cards you want usually. So, Impromptu Heist. So that got discarded? Yeah. That's good. We lost one of those that was going to forcibly destroy Zeus Bell. We are doing more than a team villain game. We are doing... Uh... One shot. So, top of knife... Oh man, <laughs> that didn't... Fine, I guess we'll just do it this way. I was like, hey, I want to see what card this is first. Nope. Uh, so, discarded an incidental contact for damage, I don't dismiss anything for tragedy, and an arcane cadence for tragedy. Okay, pretty bad. <laughs> so if we want to deal villain targets damage, an alternative is we could just destroy ongoing cards, which we can't do right now. Or, and bear with me on this, we play get out of the way right now because look how much damage this is gonna do it's gonna do zero damage but hey i discarded a card last turn no i didn't because there's not been a previous turn for the scholar <laughs> i'm just like I'm, I'm i'm saying this 
half as a joke and half to always remind myself that this doesn't work on your first turn because there is no zeroth turn in Sentinels. All right, skip, skip. Snare. Also, oh, there's a bit of a problem here. Envenomed Bolts is going into play. Play this card in the hero play area with the fewest snares card. Whenever that hero's player draws a card, each target in this play area deals itself two melee damage, then destroy this card. Scholar? Could keep moving into Flush to Iron, which... Earn Scholar into a tank, but... Damage reduction is pretty powerful in Vengeance games. We also have an alchemical redirection so we could like keep everyone alive for a turn or something. Although Flesh to Iron does negate Arch and Adept's thing. Because now he can't hit Scholar anymore. I mean, I think even if Scholar doesn't Flesh to Iron this, it's fine for Scholar to take this. We're also getting Envenomed Bolts, and that's going to go next to Knife. And I can't do anything about that. You just like innate powers that can't be used on the first turn. It's like the turn where innates are most useful and you're skipping it. Guy says hi. <laughs> um, yeah. I agree that innate powers are generally less powerful than cards you can put into play. Although some heroes do have, you know, strong innates. Wraith is one whose innate almost never matters. Because <laughs> you just put equipments into play and use them all the time anyway. Uh, Tachyon is sometimes always innate and sometimes never innate. <laughs> um, Legacy's Galvanize is almost always used. And then the other powers are less used. The other uh, variant powers are less used. IML. I mean, uh, Freedom 5 Legacy is pretty strong. Freedom 6 Legacy, actually, yeah, Freedom 6 Legacy is pretty powerful. Freedom, uh, Young Legacy is the one that I don't use that much. True, you could just use it for one damage, yeah. I'm just agreeing with everyone. Literally everyone, no matter what you say, I agree. Do I use inventive preparation? This only targets someone else. Which... See, the annoying thing about Envenomed Bolts now <laughs> is that... Uh, knife with extra card plays is less good. But what else am I gonna do? Punch Scholar? Inferno Sonata can pull cards from our trash. You know, there are some goodies in here. Don't dismiss anything, EG. However, we do... We could potentially combo Don't Dismiss Anything with Inventive Preparation, for instance, if it was already in his hand. But I could do that if I did Vernal Sonata. Oh, but the problem is he's not going to draw it because it's going to go to the bottom by misinformation. And then if Airman puts it into play, then we know, don't know what's on top. So that's annoying. I 
And actually, that makes Ronald Sonata less helpful in general, because it's basically just moving one card that we can play with knife. I mean, not that it's terrible, but we're not all getting uses out of it like normal. Why are you at full hit points? Oh, did Ambuscade play an extra card? Wait. Oh, we dealt each target next to a snare. But why is Scholar still at full? I don't... Because it's not next to a snare. Dang it. Why? Why is this not played next to a target? He did the damage to knife because Scholar wasn't next to a snare by technicality. Uh... Well, there's a way of getting Scholar to be dealt damage, and that's to punch him. He also deals himself damage. Is this so hard? Like, there are many routes I can take, but I don't know which is the most effective. Ongoing destruction is my dream right now. Our two options for that are Sarah Band of Destruction and Prototype Servo Gauntlet. otherwise we can't get rid of this ongoing I believe alternatively we just kill ambuscade but she's not the worst first person to take out I mean that misinformation is probably the best just because the incaps helpful this is gonna put a lot of nemeses in the play Including Glamour, unless it somehow got discarded along the way. to assume that Scholar gets dealt more damage. I'm gonna keep moving for Mortal Form. And I could also just play Transmute of Recovery after that. Because all have been dealt two damage by this. If I use this. Yeah, so I'm not gonna... I don't need the Inventive Preparation, but I don't know what I would do instead. Don't need the hit points from Vernal Sonata. I don't know what other instrument to conjure at the moment, so I'm just gonna play it. And then you have it. Oh yeah, he also takes damage from Concealed Pitfall. What was the other card he drew? Truth Seeker. And that hits Scholar, yay! Increase psychic damage by two. Uh-oh. 
Alright, knife has a kinetic neutralizer on the bottom, a no wind to hold fast, inspiring super tonic. No wind to hold fast would be nice. But inspiring super tonic is also pretty good. In that case, we could conjure for the harp or the lyra. Probably the harp. I guess. No, probably the Lyra, because then I could still use, like, Zeus Bell, but then there's two card plays I could make. Although we don't have card sustain yet. But the other rhythm gives card draw. It does seem like we're not overdoing it with plus two Psychic. Hmm. Doesn't Scholar also have Psychic somewhere? He does, and it also involves self-damage. Crap. And this is just Sonic and Cold and Fire. And then this is Sonic. That's tragic. Can't capitalize on the Psychic. Or we could also do more self-damage, yes. That's... I'm noticing a trend here where Psychic damage tends to be self-damage. Weird. This is the start of turn place. I have two plays here. So I could actually just do damage. Although Kinetic Neutralizer increases damage to the highest, but this first hit would lower the highest and not highest, so it would actually make this only 50% more damage. Um, I would just play both my ongoings so that I have cards to sacrifice for Airmen. But three damage versus putting another card into play. I think we could not discard for Scholar and play Truth Seeker and use that to sustain the mortal form for the time being. So if we conjure the Lyra slash Harp then having that power usage would be nice. I think we use base power. I know, I'm banged up damage. This, however, I don't think I can keep. That's okay, because Origin of the Depth can give card plays. One player must put a card from hand on top of their deck. And then that gets discarded. Rhapsody? I mean, I could discard Wrecking Uppercut, but life is bleeding cards. Rhapsody sustain eventually. Get rid of a Wrecking Uppercut. How does this deck deal damage? Logic undulates as he discards Wrecking Uppercut from his hand. Also, this moves a card. And this is the end of turn, so... Okay, actually, no, this is the text here. It's, if it's a one-shot put into play, then we discard the top card of each deck. So we're losing one of these. And I'm guessing it's gonna be... Normally I would keep Kinetic Neutralizer, but since this is a Vengeance game and we tend to focus down a villain, reducing damage to the highest doesn't seem helpful. Uh, so we discarded the Harp. Kinetic Neutralizer, well, oh, right, and a Solid to Liquid. There are six villain targets. I could heal to max right now. I could also have Arjun Adept play that for me or something.
snare. Also, it's the worst snare. When a villain character card or nemesis card would be dealt damage, redirect it to this card! Yeah! So now my, uh, <laughs> get out of the way is less good because zero, 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 one. Zero. I deal one target damage. I would heal one HP and deal one damage. GG. Should I do the Lyra? I don't even... I guess we could Proverbs and Axiom. What if I... Alchemical Redirection into Proverbs and Axioms? Does that even make sense? We haven't changed the bottom of our decks, right? So we still know what's on the bottom of Scholars and Knives. Scholars was draw five, Knife was plus one damage. If Knife used the power to put the tough Scholar draw five, what would that do? And then Argent up uses a power, punches Scholar. <laughs> Uh, Scholar's just gonna take a beating this turn, I guess, but he could play a card and use a power. So the cards that he draws from... No one to hold fast. He could play one of them. And he could deal himself three more damage and use a power. I mean, he's already using a power off of Arjun Adept by deal three more damage for another power, so he's taking 11 damage this turn. I feel like I should have gotten Flesh to Iron in play instead, but I guess that gives him hit points to gain back. The disadvantage is that we're doing a lot, but we're doing little with the lot. Like, we're doing- we're taking many actions, but we're not progressing the game if we do that. So it'd be what? Lyra, Inspiring Supertonic, Zeus Bell, Inventive Preparation, and then Inventive Preparation, and then Inventive Preparation. But it's like, perform a company and company. So one player other than me can play a card. So Scholar plays Alchemical Redirection, then the second play... Plays Proverbs and Axioms. Uh, each hero character card either does stuff so the knife deals herself three, which redirects the Scholar. Hello, Totox. What if I... What if I didn't Alchemical Redirection first? And we just dealt ourselves three? Each? Would that be better or worse? I guess since we have the alchemical redirection, it's probably not a good idea for Scholar to take a beating. And if we if Arjun Adept uses a power to punch for two... He could punch Knife if it so happens that she gets something helpful, and she does at least have Prime Punch as a power. But I'm not 100%. Pretty sure we're always taking Malira, though.
I feel like I've absorbed some of Jorbs's common expressions. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm always playing Delira, like, as if there's like a uh, different universe and we're in the universe where I'm playing this, but no matter what universe we're in, I'm playing it. I think I'm meant to play Alchemical Redirection first. <laughs> I like the meant to, I'm meant to play this. It's like, what does that mean? I'm meant to. I think I'm meant to play Alchemical Redirection. Bring what you need, also put stuff on the bottom. But it's still screwed by misinformation for a sec. Actually, we know... We know the bottom two cards of each of Scholars and Knives, right? We know we don't know Arter to Dubs because we've played both. So now it gets a bit difficult to remember. Hey kids, remember what was the first things when I said it'd be on the test? Time to get the notepad out. Exactly. Um no one to hold fast is very bottom. Oh, but I think it got cycled because we played Keep Moving. So we don't actually know. Oh. Did I do that this turn? No, I didn't. I played Mortal Form on the previous Arjun Adept turn. And I just played Truth Seeker this turn. Yeah, there's no Mortal Forms in the deck, is why I got confused. I thought it was mortal form, but it's not in the deck anymore. Uh, cause I think we just actually got it from Keep Moving, but I think we did that on Scholar's previous turn. We punched Scholar to play Keep Moving. And then Transmute of Recovery. Yeah, so this past turn we played Truth Seeker. So the bottom bottom is still no one to hold fast, and we don't know what's above that. Bottom bottom of knives is kinetic neutralizer, and the one above it. Is the minus one? Is the overcharged null shield? Okay. Well, it doesn't really make any difference, but. I was told on Reddit that these heroes can't work together. And the one shot is impossible. I like the can't work together aspect. Like, really? These heroes can't work together at all? Seriously? Are you kidding me? Like, how many how many webs have we woven so far this turn trying to figure out what we're gonna do? I think it goes to show that John can create literally any one shot and there will be a collection of people on the internet that will tell him how it's impossible. I'm going to assume that I find a keep moving or flush to iron or expect the worst in the interim. He's drawing six cards between Proverbs and Axioms and no one to hold fast. So chances are big that he gets damage reduction, so we could take some of the damage. We don't want him to play it before Arjun Adept deals some damage, but he's playing it off of Arjun Adept's damage anyway. But now I have to be very careful. Arjun Depth Power, Zeus Bell. All right. So Knife and Scholar, these two are gonna be the ones that will be moved to the bottom. Oh no, we're drawing these. No, we're drawing these. Discard. Draw? 
If I discard this, then John yells at me. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of obligated to keep it. Um, and then it's both Scholar. We start with Alchemical and we let him take a bajillion damage. So now we get the draws. Battlefield experience this is good. Oh, right. <laughs> Judgmental. I forgot about that. <laughs> well, this is when things get fun. I forgot about the plus two from Judgmental. How many of you have been sitting there thinking to yourself, when is he going to remember it? When is he going to remember it? It's sitting there right there on the screen. Somehow, I found exactly none of the cards I wanted. Do I deal myself to infernal damage so that I don't deal myself five psychic damage? Or, and bear with me on this, no one to turn loose to kill the enticing target. Aims wise, Grace Under Fire actually would be okay. If Scholar uses a power now, he gets one more card draw. Which is one more chance. But he was getting that power off of... Oh no, I guess he hasn't used this power yet. He's discarded zero cards. The Scholar has discarded zero cards since <clears throat> the end of his last turn. <laughs> the Scholar has discarded zero cards since the Scholar has not had a last turn. <laughs> I see how the under the hood works. Can I survive if we go for powers here? There's not that much damage floating around. He's currently taking eight. Possibly 10. He could, just, he could just regain hit points. An Argent that could also regain hit points. But playing another no one to hold fast out of turn. Is that worth taking five damage for five card draws? What if he dies? <laughs> Omnitron would say yes. Exactly. The environment doesn't do that much damage. At worst, he gets dealt two more damage off the environment. Or three. This one deals, yeah, three. Oh, Syncopated Onslaught is here. That's pretty nice.
That's going to help with the damage reduction aspect and make knife a bit better. Unfortunately, I can't play that right now. Let alone use it. He gets dealt 5 and recovers 2. He's at 17. He doesn't die, does he? This would kill him. <laughs> Can we just kill Judgmental Noka's Snare? Maybe I have to be cautious. I just assumed I was getting damage reduction because the chances were high, but John stacked the decks and I forgot about that. Also, if Arch Adept deals himself five, he actually also deals Scholar two. Or he hits a villain target, but that's certainly not worth five damage to Scholar. So it's actually seven damage to draw five, so I don't think that's worth. Regaining two also deals two damage. I think that's probably better. Better than <laughs> two damage and draw a card. Is. <laughs> Alright. Seven damage for five card draws isn't worth it, but bear with me on this. Five damage for one card draw? Unfortunately, the only thing I can hit that's not the snare is a battalion brute or a hero target. The snare is the worst. Oh my god, that's terrible. <laughs> Well, I could destroy the uh, redirection card now. So remember when I said Scholar didn't lose any hit points yet? <laughs> I think he lost hit points. Is it worth playing Battlefield Experience to kill the snare? Probably. Yeah, pretty pretty sure it's worth. Is it better than keeping primed punch? Because then I could play energy burn afterwards. I think I destroy primed punch. Just keep destroying your setup. Arch and up could discard. There's no chance Inspiring Supertonic's getting destroyed, right? Knife moves, focusing Conduit Blade, Flesh to Iron, Arcane Cadence. Oh geez, now I have to make a decision here. I guess we could have Knife use a power to put Flesh to Iron in play. Oh. Well, Uncheckled Destiny's gone. Energy burn, no. I can still deal two damage to misinformation. <laughs> no, I can't because of the... <laughs> it did the redirect poop. Okay, whatever. It's not how I thought that would work, but... Clearly, that's how that works. And must put a card from hand on top of our deck. Knife, why do you not have cards? 
Do you just not like having cards? Oh! Because I thought that it was each target. <laughs> okay, well, alright, Knife doesn't have cards, that's fine. Knife just doesn't want cards in this game, that's fine. Interestingly, Calypso came out after Constant Prattle. So we don't actually lose this, we draw it back. <laughs> Which would actually be somewhat interesting if we had kept Alchemical Redirection, because we'd be able to like keep it for another turn, but it's gone. Inspiring Supertonic is not a good choice. Unless we could somehow draw more. Get out of the way seems pretty good now. Seven damage. Well, eight damage technically because Battalion Brute takes plus one. Deal seven, deal seven. But I want to play the bottom of Scholar's deck. Because if I did, Argent would need to give a power to Knife in some capacity. Probably not with Rebel Yell. Is it fine for Truthseeker to go on top? Scholar would deal himself. Uh, two damage. But he's gonna regain six, seven. He's regaining seven. I think I'll move Truth Seeker and give a power to Knife. What if I want to do Inventive Preparation instead? I would like extra card plays though, but. Seeker. And technically, I have to be careful because, uh, if Ra is active in the game, get out of the way deals less damage, but... Sentinels are not active in this game. Hunting pack. Three volts. And no one else. Time for Vernal Sonata? At the very least, this would be stuff for misinformation to move. Or for Arjun Adept to get back.
Or did I want to do the plus one? No, I'm, I'm doing the power to the knife. It has to be like... Inspiring Supertonic. Well, Lyra into Supertonic. Power on knife. Unless you want to take damage to play this, but then you'll take extra damage. I don't think... I don't think you want to play that. Eight non hero cards. This information's almost dead. If I did syncopated onslaught. Form of Rhythm, plus one to Scholar, a Company of Rhythm, play a card. But then we'd also get the Company here as well. Scholar could potentially... Like, you could kill Misinformation with Grace Under Fire plus an extra damage, which could just be off Transmutive Recovery. Killing misinformation means judgmental is no longer in play. It also means we no longer know what's on bottoms of decks. If I were to... I guess I could also accomplish that without syncopated onslaught. I could do Vernal Sonata. Scholar does a damage. And then I do Zeus Bell and Telemann's Lyra for two card plays again. Scholar plays Grace Under Fire plus Transmutive Recovery, so that's going to be eight damage and two damage. Which would actually be enough. We don't even need the Vernal Sonata for that. But it does give an extra hit point to Scholar for him to throw somewhere, or an extra damage he could throw somewhere. I guess the Battalion Brute's hitting pretty hard, but he's hitting Argent Adept right now, which is fine. Probably want to think about taking out Revolt at some time. start with discard and draw so knife wouldn't actually have battlefield experience if we killed misinformation by the next turn yes I guess though we could still use knife's power to put the bottom of Scholar's deck into play that way, because Misinformation's not going to put something different on the bottom, because that will no longer be in play. So the only thing that can hit Scholar would be the environment. Which... The only thing that would is Battalion Gunner, which doesn't kill him. He's also regaining a lot of hit points by playing... Or he's getting three more hit points because of Transmutive Recovery and Vernal Sonata, potentially. Like, we could do Vernal Sonata and then we all draw the card this way. The end of Misinformation turn, each player discards one card and draws one card. So we draw the card we're putting on top. I 
guess that is the best. So eight and two kills misinformation. Kill this guy just because he has a pulse fun. I do need to focus on revolt next. I could still play Battlefield Experience. <laughs> Oh, but I guess I'm using my power at Scholar, so this doesn't actually work. Uh, I can at least play this and then the snare doesn't damage me anymore. Let's look at the top card of our decks, guys. No, we literally know what's on top. I'm not doing this. Oh, it's seven. What? Oh, because we killed the environment target. Shoot. Well, that screws up everything. That does actually screw up everything. Because I killed the environment target that hit for one less, and now misinformation will survive with one hit point. Unless I were to know when to turn loose, but if I did that, then I wouldn't have anything to keep things in play. That's annoying. What's the worst that happens, though? Still get don't miss anything, so that's fine. That was really the most important one. Really, the only thing that's gonna move is Knife's card. So, plus, Misinformation plays a card. A charge Null Shield, get out of the way. Arcane Cadence. Oh, right. Actually, yeah, that does screw up everything because we can't get a uh, Flesh to Iron in play. I guess that's the problem. I guess that's the problem. Okay. Get out of the way, though, is still fine. Does mean Arjun's up takes two damage. Get out of the way, kills misinformation. Also kills battalion mechanic, lol. Scholar regains eight hit points and kills revolt. I want to play that. <laughs> Four damage, rather, because of Judgmental. Because, of course. Oh, actually, I guess I should have hit things first. I don't think it matters. I think we still kill Revolt, which is my intended target. I guess Scholar regained one fewer hit point, so if I lose by one hit point, that's the hit point. Ten 
Tantrum! Also the Seer. Which has an oddly beneficial effect. If Fanatic's active, which which she is not. Infiltrates and obfuscates. Grace under fire. Akpunku's drum. I don't really want to move Arjun Adept's stuff. This will be drawn back. This is Calypso, right? Yeah. We could take mortal form to energy. I guess if we don't dismiss anything, we just literally get back the card. It was probably fine for Arjun Adept to move it and just get it back into play. He doesn't get a benefit off of it, but... Oh, am I supposed to use this to put Vernal Sonata on top of the deck? <laughs> Is John gonna yell at me because I didn't use a card that puts Vernal Sonata on top of the deck and make an infinite combo between Don't Dismiss Anything and Vernal Sonata or something? Infiltrate and Obfuscate. It's all liquid. Okay. John has foreseen all of my shuffles and decisions. I think I want to go for Airman just because Airman's... Airman. Like, the only thing about killing Ambuscade is that, like... It doesn't stop him from playing these cards anyway. Or at least the Nemesis cards. You snares. Oh, it gets destroyed. Scholar is fine with this. Knife's existence is to make sure Ambuscade doesn't play another card. <laughs> Vernal Sonata? I guess I could have waited for Don't Dismiss Anything until after Vernal Sonata. At the bottom of Scholars is flushed iron. I think Syncopated Onslaught is better, though. I'm gonna do syncopated onslaught. I'm gonna get greedy. to hold fast and to know when to turn loose. There are six cards in the hand other than this. This would draw five but play this so it's actually profit four so it's ten damage. Plus one is eleven. So kill airmen. That's really the main thing I wanted to do. Mortal form into transmutive recovery though. And I have to discard three cards. But we are drawing two off of Transmutive. And then I play Vernal Sonata next turn. I 
because now when Scholar regains one, he actually regains two, and he deals two, except he deals three, so... There's a bunch of pluses bouncing around now. For these heroes that don't play with each other, apparently. Actually, he... He regains two, but it's actually three, and he deals three, except it's actually four. But it's four twice. <laughs> nice. Oh, I guess that was self-damage. <laughs> I think that's fine. I think we'll be okay. First time a target enters play each turn, play an environment card. Hmm. Incidental contact. What could possibly go wrong? If I discard Vernal Sonata, I think John is going to just end my time on stream. I feel like I'm playing Incidental Contact even though it's going to hit heroes for six. Make sure that Scholar doesn't die prematurely. And Subtle Diversion has joined the party. And Heavy Hitter has joined the team. There is no... Environment target <laughs> in play. Uh... Someone's probably going to die. Scholar is not being dealt damage. No one's being dealt damage here. Okay, that's good then. Am I discarding four cards? I think I just play Proverbs and Axioms. In which case, I want to keep, like, everything. I don't necessarily need Flesh to Iron, but... I do have Expect the Worst. If I move Flesh to Iron, then Seer does hit me. damage is happening here. Three that kills knife. Three that kills knife. <laughs> okay, well, when you put it that way. I guess if he discards more, this is stronger. And he doesn't have the other power out yet, so... Is Archon Adept dying?
I'm going to operate under the tenuous assumption that he's not dying, but I'm also going to move a card. He's going to draw it back, right? So I'm going to just play it. But we would probably want to play Vernal Sonata instead. If we're playing Vernal Sonata instead, card plays are better than plus one. I think no one to turn this is not happening if we're doing the discard strat. Amosuke has nothing in play other than the snare. I guess Magman is his. Potentially, knife is saved if Magman is dealt damage. It's gonna be four, four, or six. But if I kill Airman. Is killing Airman worth losing knife? I guess if knife is... Well, di knife dies by ambuscade is what's happening. Or not by ambuscade directly, but by magmen. Does mean that oh and he has syncopated onslaught too, so this is actually slightly higher. So it's five plus one plus one is seven. So it's actually seven, four and four. He also deals himself seven but minus two, so he's doing himself five with this and two with this. He takes seven. He'll be at five. Which almost actually lines up for a knife to survive. But I don't think it does, because this will put knife at two. Oh, this is second lowest. And Ar Argent doubles will be at four. That might even be worse. <laughs> well. I'm killing Airman. I'm doing it. Enticing target. Okay, Argentip survived. That's the most important thing. Because holy smokes. Alright. However, we don't have the plus one on Scholar anymore. One HP, except it's actually two. He deals two, but it's actually one to enticing target. That's tragic. I think those hit points are important, although... There's actually no damage in here. And misinformation is nothing, and airman is nothing. Like, scholars playing a no one to hold fast is one of the things that are happening.
And we still have that annoying envenomed bolt, so knife can't really play anything. Unless she wants to be subjected to one damage. But we do have this thing with Vernal Sonata where we will draw what we put on top by misinformation, so... Proverbs and axioms -ing. Just do that all the time. <laughs> Whenever. Whenever. So I guess I'm just going to do this because I don't care for this shield generator. My minus one moved to the bottom, didn't it? Dang it. I was making fun of Wrecking Uppercut earlier for not doing much, but actually, if it discards... Wait. Oh! I never noticed this, but Airman discarded Glamour. <laughs> Airman, you were so helpful. If we kill Ambuscade, we only get Rayman- Well, it doesn't matter anymore because, like, Ambuscade's the last. But if I had noticed that, we probably could have just killed Ambuscade instead of Misinformation. Because he wouldn't have gotten Glamour. some sort of extra damage somehow. I guess if I play no one to hold fast, then I also get don't dismiss, or not don't dismiss, but like anything. Like Vernal Sonata, Scholar plays no one to hold fast, so whatever Scholar puts on top, he draws, and then if he plays don't dismiss anything, we then play this card. So we could actually kill Enticing Target, is the long and short of it. Annoyingly, this requires some damage that's more than one, so not like incidental contact. I just keep clicking back and forth between these two wrecking uppercuts. Because <laughs> I keep thinking like, what does this card say? Oh, it says this. Deal three damage, discard the top card of the villain deck. But what does this card say? Oh, deal three damage and discard the top card of the villain deck. But what does this card say? <laughs> I don't know why I keep doing that, because like... It's not flashing, so it's not the one I'm looking at, but it's literally the same card, and somehow I just can't remember that. The only other one would be Energy Burn, but that doesn't... That just doesn't discard. Would discarding be better than not discarding? I guess I would rather him play these two cards than to shuffle his deck and then play six cards or whatever. The one that searches the top six cards. So I prefer Energy Burn then. Scholar's deck is thin. You could don't dismiss anything into don't dismiss anything, and that'd be pretty funny. How about he plays zero because I win? Sure, except I still need to deal him 20 damage.
We literally just put cards on top. Well, I guess also we know what he's gonna... Like, he's drawing five here, so actually his deck's down to two. Well, he's not don't dismiss anything into don't dismiss anything. Actually, three cards. I mean, those aren't too exciting. Ongoing destruction. The target interplay. <laughs> hey, now the game, now we have a uh, now we have an issue. This building we're on might crash. can actually kill the Envenomed Bolts by using Prototype Servo Gauntlet here. Actually? I exactly know what Scholar has in his deck now. Cool. It's not helpful, though. Actually, his deck shuffled now. Well, that's nice. Keep moving, keep moving, don't dismiss. There's another immortal form in here. And there's the solid to liquid. Or at least Arch ends up gives Scholar hit points. Except I played the wrong card first. <laughs> Whoops! I played the wrong card first! Random card or get out of the way? I'd actually prefer random card.
Aha! So I could kill Knife and Arch and Adept right now. I also could have killed Ambuscade this turn. <laughs> Whoops. Maybe not, I would have shuffled my deck so I would have gotten something different. I discarded five cards. Six damage. Yeah. Either he plays Raymanta in a snare, or he plays a snare. He plays Raymanta in a snare. I finally escaped from the vaults. <laughs> Only for them to go away. Poor knife getting bullied all game. I just keep destroying her stuff. Guess I don't have a Vernal Sonata in my hand. That's awkward. Only there was a way I could somehow deal damage and win. If only. I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna prolong the inevitable. Actually, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna make sure that I'm not mathing this wrong somehow, but I know how to win. But just in case I don't do it with the one card because I play the wrong card or some stupid crap again. I was told these heroes don't play well with each other, and I basically played with only two heroes. Because <laughs> Knife... Well, I guess Knife gave setup early on, and then just we started, like... <laughs> forgetting all that. Villainy 501, Mint. Man, this one-shot is too easy! It's too easy. Why didn't I do quick draw? Why was this one not done? <laughs> Wait, was that like the last one I needed to do or something? Oh, I think I know what I was doing. I think. I missed this week, but I did these weeks or something. I don't know. No in caps better than you, but you also beat it in half the time. Well, time is not of the essence, John. I have learned that it is okay to take my time and work out my plays. Because I've watched Slay the Spire players who do that. Not just Jorbs, but others. Also, you take a million years in Spirit Island, right, Kappa? Um, quick draw? Whoops. I guess I just do that. Nope, not that. This. There's no Chrono Ranger here. This is just wrong. The frenzied play Gret slashed at the Harpy and was all she could do to dodge and duck away from the attack. I can't get my spell set up! I need a minute here! Expatriate remarked. If you can't go from unarmed to pulling the trigger in under two seconds, you're too slow for... She was interrupted by a streaking blur, sending the villain staggering and organizing Lillian's components on a convenient little table faster than the eye could see. Tachyon quipped, two, two seconds sounds like an eternity! Anyone want, want take out? Be right back! <laughs> this one shot requires Rook City, Mini Pack 3, and Oblivion. Is there a better way that, like... I mean, obviously there's, there's, um, 
what's the word? There's not pretext. What's it called when a court makes a decision based on a previous decision? Precedent. There's precedent here in her own deck where Tachyon speaks quickly by there being no spaces in between the words. But it's annoying to read is the problem. Makes me wonder if there's a better way to indicate this. Maybe use hyphens instead. So there's still spaces in between, but you can tell that like because hyphenated words are just words that are conjoined anyway, but you can still make out what the individual words are. It's not a major complaint. If it were a major complaint, I'd have to forget one of the complaints in my hand. But... Yeah, sure, quick draw. Plagrat versus Freedom 5 Tachyon, Expatriate, Collector Guys, and Harpy in... Not Minneapolis. And Tachyon talks fast, it's hard to hear, so it's better to be hard to read to get... Hard to read to get used to it. <laughs> rawr, bite, nah, rend, rawr. Hang on a sec, I need a quick bite to eat. Okay, stopped bank robbery on my way back, and what were you saying? There, I slowed it down for you. All right, Tachyon has two accelerated assaults, a sucker punch, and a synaptic interruption. Expatriate has quick draw, RPG launcher, speed loading, and submachine gun. Collectionist guys has gritty reboot, two let me see that's and oh yeah, I'm that guy. Darkwatch Harpy has applied numerology, Harpy Hex, Lash of the Elements, and Mystical Outburst. I still can never tell the difference between Harpy and Darkwatch Harpy. Like if I were to actually study their outfits, I would be able to figure it out. Every time I see Harpy, I'm just like, oh hey, that's Harpy, and then it's Darkwatch Harpy, whoops. All right, Plague Locus enters play. Plague Locus is basically an extra damage increase to Plague Rat and infected heroes. At the end of the villain turn, Plague Rat regains hit points equals the number of infected heroes. At the start of the villain turn, if all infected heroes are infected, Plague Rat flips. Whenever a card named Infection is destroyed, Plague Rat deals each hero target for toxic damage. So now I wonder what happens if a custom deck has a card named Infection in it. I'm going to make a hero where all 40 of their cards are named Infection. And all 40 of them are powers that say do an effect and then destroy this card. <laughs> At the end of the villain turn, Playgrad deals each hero target one irreducible melee damage. Plus one did. In flip side, Plague Rat. Start of the villain turn, Plague Rat deals each infected hero two toxic damage, not irreducible. Then if any active heroes are not infected, Plague Rat flips. But infected heroes have additional powers to deal hero target three toxic damage, to regain three hit points, or deal themselves four toxic damage to destroy a card named Infection. At the end of the villain turn, Plague Rat deals each hero target one irreducible melee damage. So he always does the irreducible melee regardless of sides. Historically, Plague Rat is just damage rush here, a uh, damage rush villain. And we start with the infection. Do we just put it on Tachyon because of base power? We put it on Harpy because of pings? Applied Numerology is actually pretty good, except is this irreducible? It is irreducible. Dang it. Harpy Hex is also good. There are lots of good cards here. I think Harpy is a bit more controllable, because with Harpy Hex, she's always dealing two damage every turn. Obviously, this can do a lot of damage. And this combos with Harpy Hex to do a lot of damage. Tachyon with Blitz is also really nice. I'm wondering... I think I'm going to flip Tachyon to, to Scientific Tachyon. Super Scientific Tachyon. Discard a bunch of her cards. Or put them into play, which would be even better. And then flip it back and then use Blitz to deal a lot of damage. I 
Of course, this power is not as effective on guys. Although he would still deal one damage when he could instead deal two damage. I'm not sure if there's ability elsewhere. I prefer Dark Watch here, I believe. Something I think could be nice, and I'm sure has already been thought of by Candelabra, because Candelabra is awesome. But if you have collect if you have completionist guys, not collectionist, completionist guys. If you have completionist guys. There should be some information somewhere about what the variants of the heroes are for the people that aren't aware of what all the variants of Tachyon are. But I know the other Harpy variant is just straight up deal 2 damage, which is... I could either deal 2 damage or, bear with me, flip a token, deal 2 damage as the result, and play a card. I get that information when I use the power. Yeah, but in a one-shot, what if I want to see what the variants are and then decide later that I don't want to do it? Yeah, no. <laughs> it's not a big deal. If it's if it appears somewhere, that's fine. I've not played Completionist Guys that much, so I wasn't aware. Put this on Harpy. The next infection can go on Tachyon, probably. I can go back out to the multiverse. Oh, yeah, that's right. For some reason, I thought that would reset the game, but you're right. I think I saved the accelerated assaults. If I get infected next. I think I don't worry about Plague Locus. Because we want to utilize the plus damage. I could destroy the infection and be dealt 4 damage. Which is actually 5, because plus 1. 5 damage to each hero target, even better. Jeremy likes this. Oh yeah, and that guy on Harpy would actually be pretty cool. If both of them are infected. Because then Harpy Hex... Does it count whenever you flip a control token? That would not work then, right? Because it's not guys flipping the control token? Let me see Prejudice Expatriate. No, let me just draw Everyone cards. I know is dead. It still works, but guys doesn't get his own tokens like with setback. Well, yeah. So I guess that would mean, like, if there was a power that flipped tokens or something, or ongoing cards that flipped tokens, like this. I want more... Arcanes. I think I do Applied Numerology. Even though it doesn't help against the self-damage. This doesn't have numerals. <laughs> but I think, like, you know, if Tachyon gets pushing the limits, it's nice. But I don't have that yet, so it might not be helpful. But the thing is, I want to, like... I want to play this when I have all... 
arcanes because then I don't deal myself that much damage. But I guess I don't have to wait for it because it doesn't do like more damage. I want to wait for all arcanes. I guess next turn I could do Lash followed by Mystical Outburst. Like, Applied Numerology. I guess the problem is this goes off first and it uses up the minus one. I'm still going to play Applied Numerology. Maybe I copy Harpy's Ongoings. Maybe I don't play cards. Have you ever thought about that one? <laughs> well, this still puts cards into play, so I'm going to put this on, guys, with the expectation that we will then copy RP stuff. Be nice if I could play that. I'll accept it. My trash is still empty. What the hell? better if I could play a card off that. But it would mean Harpy could deal two damage, but she already deals two damage. This also doesn't do anything. I could use Experiment on Tachyon and then turn Tachyon into the card draw one. I think that works fine. <laughs> well, uh, there's the pushing the limits. Don't worry, guys, we found the pushing the limits. We found all five copies of them. By five, I really mean three, but you know. Jesus. Don, why'd you stack the decks like this, pal? I really don't like let me see that outside of like copying fixers tools like I feel like it's not terribly exciting because it doesn't copy it just steals and so you're transferring one hero's tools or equipments to it to guys but like I rarely see situations where that's powerful outside of like obviously jack handle on guys or Dual crowbars on guys, and then he uses a power that deals damage to all non-hero targets. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. <laughs> but I could steal a utility belt. Yeah, that'll show him. So that guys can use more powers. But wait. I think I'm gonna lose arcane explosion. Do we want a terrible start of environment turn effect, or do we discard a card? <laughs> I think we discard a card. I guess... 
Nimble Strike's better than Accelerated Assault because Takian has two card plays. Shadowy Ambush. Yes. Yes. See? It's perfection. We are now at the fleet of foot part of the stream. to save this. Sure, I'll hit the Plague Locust. That's fine. Everybody draws a card! Goggles. Probably wanted to blow up Shadowy Ambush. It's fine. Guys could do it. Except we wanted guys to play, uh... Oh yeah, I'm that guy. We're expecting to do quite a bit of damage this turn. It'd be nice if we had plus damage, but this version of guys can't play multiple cards that well. We could play gimmicky character and change the future. I also gain infection, nice. Why do I do damage here? Oh, because when this card enters play, I deal damage. I am now doubly infected. <laughs> am I? No, I'm not. It's not next to me. I am not infected. Or, I am infected, but I'm not doubly infected because it's not next to me. Oh, I could swap Expatriate and play an extra card that way. Is there a reason to do that? I'd prefer to swap Tachyon back, I would say. Like... When Oh uh, yeah, I'm that guy goes away, does that trigger the Infection Destruction? Well, it's not a card named Infection, as far as I know. It's a card titled Oh uh, yeah, I'm that guy. It copies the text, but not the name, right? It copies the game text, which I presume is this text. Hold on. <laughs> oh, right. I can deal two targets, two psychic, or one target, three psychic. Which is actually three and four, respectively. But I want to do the card draw, right? Card draw. Like, doubling Tachyon's effects are pretty fun.
All right, so I want to do all the things. I want Lash. I want Mystical Outburst. I'm going to start with Lash. It deals up to. And then I don't deal myself any damage. Team Leader Guys is such an odd notion. I'm not going to do this damage. Still benefiting from the plus one. Oh, I guess. Forced to flip a token here. So I should have played Mystical Uppers first, but then I would have dealt a lot of damage here. It still does a lot of damage, though. I do one less damage, I think, is the result. Fine. This turn. <laughs> and this turn. And this turn. There, that was our big damage turn. Police back up. Can we infect the police? Infection? I think time it's time for Tachyon's infection. So now we flip Tachyon back to her blitz side and then wreak havoc. Hey! Nice! It's still one! <laughs> Yeah! Also, Push and Limits went first because Infection was played second. Aha! Order of Operations, yo! Alright, I'm currently infected. Can we just win? Somehow I doubt it because... Most of our damage was from that Harpy turn. It looks like we're close, but we don't have that much going for us, right? Like, two accelerated assaults and a light speed barrage? I guess Nimble Strike. And then my base power could do stuff? I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely doing Nimble Strike. Like, I'm definitely, like, pushing Plague Rat. The question is whether I do light speed barrage this turn or not. I guess Nimble Strike number two. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, I played HUD goggles, right. <laughs> uh, I played HUD goggles for my first card play. <laughs> I know how to count to three. Impersonic Assault would be good. Any way we can get Tachyon to play cards? I guess if there was another fleet of foot in here. I guess, oh, she could play Lightning Reflexes off, guys. Yeah, and then, yeah, that could work good. That could work good. The most damage I would do is unload. And do Prejudice, Pride, Prejudice. I could play Tactical Shotgun and then use Innate to play Unload, but then that's 8 damage, so it's actually more. But, um, psh. Hot Twist. But, like, we just win by Tachyon's next turn, right? So, unless there's another hostage situation. But in that case, I don't get to play Unload either.
Oh, I do get infected twice. Bummer. It makes me upset beyond belief. All right, well, retcon. But you don't do extra stuff there. Uh... Selling out? I think it's selling out. Revo Cola, experimentally refreshing. I wonder how how often anyone clicks no. I do not want to use the power on prejudice. I guess if the only target left is Dreamer, then you wouldn't. Not only was that not a successful experiment, but we discarded zero bursts. It is literally the worst. Do I deal each target six damage? <laughs> Do I deal each target six damage? <laughs> what if I did that? Do I still have a redirect? I still have a redirect. I think that is sick. Uh, deal each non hero target zero plus one, deal each hero target five plus one, but one redirect, so it's six plus six plus one is 13 damage. Plus, I flip a token, so it's two more is 15. I could discard five cards. Dealing one target, one projectile damage, which is two. So ten damage. Do you, do you, do you, okay. <laughs> Six, twelve, thirteen, twenty-three. But this flips. Wait. Oh, where did I get one from? Oh, right, this one. No, it's two, one, six, six. Twelve, fourteen, fifteen. 17, 19, 29. Oh, GG. All right. Oh. <laughs> Just wondering whether that was first target or each target. I can only... Oh no, I drew... I draw two. Okay, now I can discard up to five. Oh my gosh. So it turns out that Infection on Harpy on turn one was co the correct choice. Harpy with any damage increase is really strong. Unfortunately, we never got to do the sick combo with Tachyon's Blitz with extra damage. We're trying to get set up for that, but Harpy was too strong. Could have set it up one turn earlier if I had not flipped a Super Scientific Tachyon, and I probably would have won faster as the result, but I also would have won faster had I played Lightspeed Barrage, I guess? Would I have? I don't think I would have, actually. Alright, well, it is 9.05. I'm good for this week. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed your stay. This was Dolphin's Dive. We stream every Thursday at 7 p.m. Generally playing Sentinels of the Multiverse, but sometimes One Deck Dungeon or Spirit Island. Check out the other streams we have on this channel. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. is Handelobber Live with John. Every Thursday at 7 p.m. is Dolphin's Dive with yours truly. Every Friday at 4 p.m. is Luck of the Seamus with Seamus the Hook Monster. 
Every Saturday at 2 p.m. is Spirit Island Saturdays with usually myself, usually John, usually Seamus, and sometimes one of you if you claim the 20,000 points of lob reward to be a guest on Spirit Island Saturdays. And every Sunday at 6 p.m. is Tales from the Archive with another letdown. Handle Lobra products include Sentinels of the Multiverse, Bottom of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, Aeon's End, and Spirit Island. They are all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices, and One Deck Dungeon is also available on Switch. You can find more information on those games at handlelobra.com. Uh, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash logicdolphin, twitter.com slash logicdolphin, YouTube, search for Logic Dolphin, Discord. Uh, I am Logic Dolphin. <laughs> you can find me in the Handle Lobber server, and plus other ones as well. Um, but that is it for this week. Have a good night, everyone.